Hello everybody, this is Miranda the Hybrid and welcome to Art Talk Thursday. So today's topic is a little bit more sensitive than I usually go into, but considering the patterns I've seen, especially in the people I help, I really want to address it. Today we're talking about social media and self-worth and loving your art. Now, I have a bit of a story to tell you guys, and I'm gonna be going into my old woman mode because this is from when I was a kid. So I grew up not showing anybody my art aside from my friends and family. And by friends, I mean like four people in high school and junior high and elementary. And that was because social media for art did not exist. What I'm talking about is I had to beg and plead my parents to let me go on DeviantArt because I saw a YouTube video, somebody had compiled a bunch of really cool dragon art and I was like, oh my God, did you make this art? And they're like, not really, but I'm on DeviantArt if you ever want to chat. And so I made my first friends on DeviantArt and I posted my stuff. DeviantArt was toxic in its own ways. Excuse me. DeviantArt was toxic in its own ways, but it still was the first social media I ever posted my stuff to. And that was where I was introduced to the self deprecation of posting your art on social media of any sort, frankly. So I began posting my art there. And of course there were people who were way better than me. And I began unconsciously comparing myself to them, but that made me want to do more. It made me want to push forward because I'm a very, I don't want to say rare, but in my personality, when I see somebody who's better than me, I go, how do they do that technique? I must learn how to do that technique. And I'll sit there and I'll memorize it and try figuring out how they do it. And then maybe, I mean, I used to do it immediately afterwards. These days I'll be like, I wonder how they did the new technique that I've never seen before. That art is quite marvelous. Let me see. Hmm. Okay, I've learned. And then I go on my way because I'm a lot more mature than I was ages ago. And now art, you can kind of tell what technique is what technique and how somebody did something. That's called experience. It's called skill. It's called being an old person. But anyhow, my first run-in was DeviantArt. And then from there, I basically did nothing. I was on DeviantArt for years and years and years until I got into college and they had us put stuff on ArtStation. ArtStation is like DeviantArt for people who want to be professional minus the furries. That's basically what it is. And I didn't really care about ArtStation that much because it was just something my school wanted me to do. Then Instagram came along and that was a bad thing. <laughs> I posted on Instagram thinking, oh yeah, my art's the shit. I love my art so much. And it got basically no likes, no views, no nothing. Slowly over like four or five years, I crept up to 300 followers. And you guys have seen my art. I personally think I deserve far more than 300 followers for my level of skill. Well, yeah. I think many, 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 many people deserve many more followers based on their skills but social media doesn't reward like that. And that's one of the most unpleasant possible things about social media. It doesn't matter how good you are. The algorithm doesn't always pick up on you and that makes some people feel bad. So I continued sitting around about 300 followers on Instagram for the longest time and then TikTok happened and now I have 11,000 within less than a year. And that completely messed with my sense of self-worth, let me tell you. And I guess in a way I joined the ranks of other Gen Z's and young millennials. Our combined generations are the least mentally healthy generations ever. We have the most anxiety, the most depression. We are so screwed up. And a huge part of it is because of social media. Like there is a giant red finger to point at social media for this. And I personally think it's because social media really screws with self-worth. You're always comparing yourself to other people. You're always setting up this ideal that you see all over the place on screens. The advertising shoves a certain kind of body in your face. You're like, oh my God, that's what a woman looks like or that's how big and buff a man is supposed to be or, oh, I have to adhere to one gender or the other or else I'm considered a freak. Not true, love yourself, be who you want to be. The amount of digital bullcrap, the, the, the fuzz, the wish mash that's shoved in our ears and, our, and through our eyes all the time has done such an immense blow on our self-worth and our self-identity and our art and how we enjoy our art. There is something I have noticed that I didn't see when I was younger. And that's that no matter what age somebody is, no matter what age a young artist is, they always start posting their art on social media. And I do not think it should be like that. I didn't start posting until I was like 13, 14, 15. 
maybe even a bit older than that. And I was I was posting crappy pictures. God, if you go look at my old deviant art, someday we'll we'll have a scour through my deviant art. It'll be an art talk or a random fun vlog video. But I see so many young artists who haven't accumulated a lot of skill yet. Like I'm not saying that you guys are bad, you're not. You just don't have a lot of practice and skill. Listen, I did not draw well when I was a kid. I drew horribly. It was not to my standards. You have to accumulate skill to be a good artist. That's just how it works. Unless you're a prodigy and one in like 5 million or 20 million or a billion kids is a prodigy. So it's not like you're going to wake up and suddenly be a good artist. But because of social media and seeing other people's art, I feel a lot of younger artists are like, oh my god, I'm not as good as them. I'm not getting as many likes as them. I'm not a good artist. I hate my work. I do not deserve to be posting things. And that is crap. There is this weird pressure this weird expectation for young artists or artists of any age right now to post their art on social media no matter what. And if they do not get views and likes, their art sucks. That seems to be a precedent. It seems to be an underlying belief. And it is not true whatsoever. I'm getting very passionate about this. I want you guys to love yourself. I want you to love your art. Don't... The likes do not matter. Take it from somebody who has 315,000 followers on TikTok. The likes do not matter. Some of my best work that I've spent hours and hours on gets barely any views. And then I post a freaking video about me being bald and it gets 500,000 likes. Like, it does not matter. Okay? The likes do not matter. I swear they do not matter. Like, the algorithms are a mess. So, this is a completely unfair system. The fact that people are trying to base their self-worth on the number next to a little heart below their picture is horrible. You guys are worth so much and you have so much you can do in your life. You, you have so much room to love and be loved. You have so much room to improve and grow and enjoy the process. You, you cannot, you cannot base your self-worth and what you think about your artistic skill based on how many likes you get, based on how many followers you have. It is completely toxic. Just, just do not, do not pay attention to it. In fact, if I were a young artist, unless I was a freaking prodigy, and even if I was a freaking prodigy, I wouldn't post my art until I was like 16 or 17. Your brains are still developing. My, my I'm, I'm 25, so my brain's basically done develop, developing at this point, but... If you're a preteen or an early teenager and even a middle-aged teenager, your brains are still developing. If you literally program your brains to have self-worth based on social media, you're going to be completely fricked up as an adult. It's going to be horrible and it, you won't be able to find happiness. It's going to be so hard to reprogram yourself and that's going to be a really, really bad thing. We are going to be facing a crisis. I sound like a conspiracy theorist. You need to detach yourself and your art from social media. Literally, if you have a social media and you don't need it to run a business, and I'm talking, I'm not talking about like $4 commissions for a sketch. Get, get your head out of the clouds on that one too. Like, like you're, <laughs> you don't need people to see your art yet. If you're between the ages of like 11 and 16, it doesn't matter. What are you trying to do? Why, why do you need people to see your art at that age? You don't seek other people out. Like, literally, there is no reason a 13 year old should be trying to make money off of commissions. Yeah. And if you set yourself up for, that's literally setting yourself up for disappointment and failure at that age, unless you're a prodigy or something. Like go mow lawns, make a lemonade stand, babysit somebody's cat. Don't try making money off of commissions. It's not easy. I'm 25 years old, I have an art degree and a giant base of people, it's hard for me to get commissions. Don't do commissions as a young artist. It will set you up for disappointment. Wow, I turned red as I got angrier in the background, turned blue and purple. If you're young, don't try doing commissions. I, I hate it when I see a 12 year old trying to get money off of their drawings and then nobody, nobody wants to, you know, nobody wants to pay them for it because they're not at a good skill level yet. And then the poor 12 year old feels bad and they see all the other bigger, older, more professional artists getting commissions. They're like, why, why does nobody like my art? It's because you don't have the skill level yet. You don't have the experience. You need to practice. You need to practice to get to the point. 
And that's not a bad thing. It is not bad to be inexperienced at art. I will never say somebody's bad at art. You're inexperienced and unpracticed, but you're not bad. You just need the practice. You need the repetition. You need the lessons and the skills. Don't, don't jump. Please, for the love of, love of the art gods. Do not jump onto social media when you have no followers, no references, and barely any practice. And try asking for commissions. And then get sad but when nobody wants you to do a commission for them. You're setting yourself up for heartbreak. You're seriously setting yourself up for heartbreak. Especially if you're super young. Just don't do it. I know that sounds really harsh, but sometimes the truth is harsh. I don't mean to break your heart. But let me break your heart instead of other people, because I'd rather the heartbreak comes from somebody you know you can trust than a bunch of goons on Instagram who will be like, Hey, I'm interested in your $5 sketches, and then uh, never pay you and disappear into the blue, because that happens a lot too. You are worth more than $4. The pricing that some young artists are using for their art is horrendous. I see some gorgeous work out there and they're like, oh yeah, I'll do this entire freaking picture with a background for $20. What? No, no. At that skill level, <laughs> it could be pulling in a hundred, 300, maybe even 300 sometimes dollars. It, it just, Ooh, I need to calm down. I'm so passionate about this. <laughs> when I was younger, I never showed anybody my sketchbooks outside of my family and my friends. I have a horde of sketchbooks. I have so many bad drawings, so many drawings I just sat and enjoyed doing. And sometimes I wouldn't even show my family. My mom and dad would be like, Miranda, what are you drawing in your sketchbook? And I'd be like, ha ha, you don't get to see it. It was mine. It was for me to enjoy. The process, the characters, the stories I came up with, the colors, it was for me, it was mine. And nobody else was allowed to have it. It was just for me. And now I feel, other young artists are like, oh, I drew something, I drew something. Everybody look, I drew something. Can I please have some likes? Nobody's liking it. It's not worth anything. I'm not worth anything. No, that's not how it works. You have an entire life ahead of you. Stop caring about what other people think about what you enjoy. If you enjoy drawing your little wolf characters, if you're an anthro, if you like drawing robots, if you enjoy doing Pokemon fan art, I don't care. Don't put it out there just because you want to get some likes on it. Other people's opinions about your art is not what you should be. We're going to go look at my old crappy art that I literally have not shown anybody because I want to show you guys what it's like to just enjoy yourself. Let's go! So we are straight up going to another room. Hi, baby. Because I want to show you guys the kind of art you can do just for yourself. Now, nobody's seen this room yet. I haven't even released the uh, tour video, but this is my art room. This is my room where I don't really video. This is my room where I just can do exactly whatever I want. And I'll show you some of my old art that I really, really love. This is me when I was like in the high school or something and I designed my ideal place. Like just, you can, you can literally make anything. What else do we have here? Again, a high school piece. Look, it's, it's sketchy, it's rough, that he's way too skinny. Oh God, what else do we have? But, but look, this is all out of pure love of art. This is not about me trying to post it to other people and get attention. I do this because I love to do it. Oh God, let's turn on the light so you can see the extra wall. Like, check, check this out. This is, okay, that wasn't for fun. That was for, that was for college, but that was just completely for fun. You have to fall in love with what you're doing. This was when I was writing the Darwin Da Vinci Project when I was in high school. I just, I loved doing this kind of stuff. You doing your art should come out of your love for your art. It's so important. Let's take a look at my sketchbooks. Oh, where are my old grungy sketchbooks? This is a uh, current project. This is uh, pictures I want to re uh, redraw. Most of these are in high school. Like most of this is high school stuff. Like wanted to redraw that. Uh, that was me teaching something. It just, oh God, what is this? What even is this? Oh, this was the front of my English binder. Oh, that looks so cool. Yeah, I, I literally didn't show any of this off to anybody. This was just for me. And it's what made me fall in love with art and continue practicing. Let's look at this. What is this? Oh, <laughs> how old was I when I did that? Holy crap. What is this? Does it have any date markers? It doesn't have any date markers at all. I would guess this was probably when I was between the ages of 10 and 13. 
maybe, maybe a bit earlier. I don't know. What else do we have? What else? Oh no, it's falling down. What else goodies do we have in here? Gimme, gimme. Oh, I think this is an early model of an atomic dragon. Because it's a really weird, to is are those dragon boobs? But yeah, no, no, totally do these things for yourself. Enjoy what you do. Don't do art for other people. Do them because of your own passion and curiosity. Don't even post your art on social media if you're not happy with it yet. Like, look at this one. Look at that. Early drawing as a kid. What? <laughs> really early drawing as a kid. What is that, a cat squid and a really fat mouse? Like, you guys are seeing art that I have literally never shown anybody ever outside of my parents. This stuff is ancient. This stuff is just like, this is stuff I was doing when I was a kid. This has never seen the light of day. It has never seen a camera before. I'm not going to show you this stuff because this is a college stuff. Other people have seen that already. What else can we show you that has never seen the light of day? Oh, wait. Wait, there might be stuff under the bed. I thought I was about to see a horrifying face down there. I was like, am I going to be murdered now? College art. Old art. Let's look at the old stuff. The real old stuff. Okay. Oof. I had to lie down to get there. Yeah, you guys are seeing stuff I have never shown anybody before. Oh my god. Oh my god. I did not, I did not show that to you. Okay. The Wolf Cried Moon, illustrated by Miranda. Look at this. This is when I was into My Little Pony. And that was a picture of uh, our menorah, because we're Jewish. Like, oh my gosh. What? What is all, whoa, that's charcoal. I used to steal, oh my god. See, everybody's like, Miranda, you're such a good artist. This is the shit I used to draw when I was a kid, okay? <laughs> I think it was like five or something. Does this have a date? 2002 it's 2002 was 19 years ago so i was six years old this is what i was drawing when i was six years old oh my god <laughs> cat kitten oh my gosh i think my mom drew that one what was this is this this, this lady cat pooping on somebody what is going on that this dog is trying to shoot a bird with a shotgun and oh my god tiger horse stickers everywhere look at this sparkly sticker shit but this is like this is what i mean i would not have even thought of showing this to anybody this was oh this is like the very first draft of quick mick you know the blue dragon in the web comic uh, in my webtoon this is one of the first ever drawings of quick mick he used to have spikes i didn't even know that it's squirtle and it's mewtwo <laughs> oh my god oh oh no i can't show I cannot show that. Okay, we're showing this. Oh my god. I used to have a huge crush on Legolas, and so- Oh fuck, I cannot show that. Oh no! It's so cringy! I can't get over it! Look at the- Hey Miranda, want to kiss? Oh my god, I was six! I was six! What was I doing? Why was I drawing this stuff? Quick make, why, you should have talked some sense into me. I can't believe I used to draw like this. But seriously, this is what I mean. Draw for the love of drawing. Draw because you enjoy drawing. You don't have to show it to anybody. That was smog. That's actually a really good picture of smog for a six year old. Uh, that, that was when I was starting to work on front drawing instead of side drawing. But like, like seriously, draw because you enjoy drawing. Don't draw because you want to impress other people. This entire, this entire book, <laughs> may it scientist, this entire book, well, I think that was a study of looking out of an airplane window. Um, this was made just because I loved to do art. It was not made because I wanted to show off to other people. And that's the point. Do that even these days. Don't, don't just post art online and feel like it's only good if people like it. If you get a number. Oh, here's more Legolas. Good freaking lord. Oh, that's Legolas getting his butt burned for some reason. And I'm Catwoman fighting a giant wolf. Oh, interesting. <laughs> yeah, but like some, some people... I think somebody else drew that. Yeah, because somebody else was into anime and it was one of my friends at school. I'm trying to find something. Yeah, this is about the age that I was doing stuff that you guys want to post online. I never posted any of this online. It's like I was doing comic books. 
I wonder if this is any, is this any dated? I wish I could tell you, but I think this was around 12 to 14 years old, like drawing stuff like this. I didn't even think about posting it online. You guys are born in an era where you're kind of constantly thinking about, oh, we should post things online because that's what artists do. Oh my God, is that Fashionistasaurus? Oh my God, it is. This is one of the first drawings of Nido Alinar. That's a current drawing of Nido Alinar. This is one of the first drafts. He looks almost exactly the same. That's so cool. Oh my God, I haven't looked at this stuff and I was trying to draw Yadalon upside down. That was difficult. See, I was working through, I wasn't worried about what other people were thinking of my art. I was literally working on my art style like, if you guys want to know about art style, I drew this. <laughs> the skewer man. Oh, because he has too many piercings. Oh, no, that's so mean. But just, just like, like doing studies. Uh, just work on getting better. Don't, don't work and worry about what other people think of your art. It will destroy you as an artist. Like, absolutely, positively destroy you as an artist if you try doing that. Just like, the reason I'm good is because I filled all of these sketchbooks with so much stuff. That's a- Whoa! I got so shocked that I dropped my camera. That's a really good picture. That's Quick Mic. That's another Quick Mic picture. He's looking really, really grumpy. Probably because he's figuring out that he's going to have to live through multiple timelines over and over again to fix the dimensional rift he created. But that's another thing. But yeah, I was doing studies. And this is like all my early teens. This is like early teen drawings. I never once thought about posting this crap online. Wow, it has two covers. Two for one, baby. But yeah, no. Don't draw for other people. Draw for yourself. Because you love it. That's on that, baby. So as I said, as I repeat, come on, chair. As I repeated multiple times there, do your art for you, your art for your enjoyment. All of those drawings were so horrible and so beautiful, and I still adore them. I love every single piece of art I've ever done that wasn't some horrible vent art that I was trying to use to get over something dangerous from my past. But I love my art. I love all the crappy little drawings. I love the big pieces. I love all my mistakes. I do my art for me. And that's one of the reasons that <laughs> it's one of the reasons that TikTok killed me. Frankly, if I'm going to be completely honest, TikTok killed my love for art for a while. Only recently have I regained it. Uh, basically, when I started this YouTube channel for everybody, that's kind of when my love for art started coming back. I was making... I had never really gotten any attention over my art before. And... When I started going big on TikTok, I was drawing and posting videos not for me. I was posting it for other people. Because seeing those tens, even hundreds of thousands of views roll in, and all the comments, and all the requests, suddenly I was getting attention. And it felt good at first. Because let me tell you something. After a few months, I felt hollow. I wasn't getting any happiness. I was frustrated because the algorithm loved me at first, then it ditched me. And then it would love me, then it would ditch me. And I felt frustrated. What was I doing wrong? Why wasn't this literal line of binary that showed me a number not a high number why 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 i tried different things and i see lots of other tiktok creators doing this they will ride that high they'll get used to their big numbers and then the algorithm will favor somebody else or you know people move on that's part of the truth Sometimes people just move on. Sometimes maybe your work isn't as high quality as it was before. Maybe people are individuals. I know I used to be fans of things, you know, I used to be really interested in one thing a few years ago, and now I'm totally interested in another thing, and I've basically ditched that old thing. When it comes to being on social media, you are a product. But don't allow it to control you. Like, please, trust me. As somebody who has 315,000 followers on TikTok and 11,000 on Instagram and now 8,000 here on YouTube, holy shice, that happened really quickly. The like count does not satisfy you. It feels good in the beginning, but then you begin seeking more. And then when it drops, which it will, trust me, your like count will drop. It leaves you feeling empty. Your like count is not a person. Your like count isn't a pet.
Your like count is not your passion. It is a hollow number and you are allowing it to control your life. And it's extraordinarily bad for you. The way the algorithms are built for places like TikTok and Instagram, it's literally made to force creators to innovate. They have to do the next biggest thing. They, they, they start going wild, doing things they would never have considered doing before. For instance, on TikTok, I had never considered posting a video of myself in just my bra, but you know what I did a few months ago? <laughs> it's manipulative. That's a very good way of putting it. It's T-O-U. It's traumatic to your self-worth. It's objectifying to you yourself because you become a product and you have to continue putting yourself out there to get the likes that are making you happy at the moment. And it's you. Unforgiving. That's not a nice word. Tau. It's almost like, ow! To your heart! So yes, the likes, the follows, all that stuff, that doesn't last. And the only reason that you should be even on social media is if you need to run a business, if you need those eyeballs on your work, specifically because you're trying to sell it. But you know what does last? (laughs) Where's my freaking sketchbook? Because I just showed you, I just completely gushed over my old work. I still, I found my love for art again. It happened after I stopped going on TikTok for two months in a row. I just, I was not on TikTok. I was not posting to Instagram. I lost some followers. I did not give a single flying f- And it felt great because when I, I started loving art again, I started doing stuff for myself. You know what I made last night? I made a super duper goofy cool image out of the teaching that like, you, you, if you guys saw last night, we made the, uh, we made that, uh, I made the anatomy video for you guys. And then afterwards, I just wanted to fool around. It's the first time I've wanted to fool around in ages. But like, I made this super crappy, goofy skeleton picture. I'm just going to put it on the screen. (laughs) I love this thing. It's so cool. And I made a really cool video to go along with it that basically got no views. But, um, and then that's the thing. After I posted it and it got no views, I felt bad. And I was like, why am I feeling bad? The amount of fun I had making this video was obscene. And I'm not even going to show it to you. I know, I know other people don't like it. I don't care. I en- I really like it. I enjoy watching it. It's mine. It's my video. Almost every time I open Procreate to make a picture for myself, I feel glee. And I post it only because I have to, because I have followers. Frankly, I do my art for myself and I'm happy. I'm solid. And I want you guys to be like that too. Like this doodle of Yadalon was made completely for myself. I posted it. Not many other people liked it, and I was like, eh, I don't care. It's mine. And not to blow my horn, but if an artist of my level doesn't care about the likes and the follows, then younger people who haven't put in the time yet to get to a higher skill level should not care. At all. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy the process. My process to get to this point where I can draw stuff like that and that and that, that took 20 years of consistent, constant practice. And I still don't get that many likes. The only reason I have a lot of followers on Instagram is because I was a freaking goofball on TikTok. Frankly, not that many people value my art. And I used to let that fact run my life. And now I don't. If you let other people decide if you're going to be happy or not, you're never going to be a happy person. It's just not going to happen. You need to make your art for you. The most important thing you have. Oh, I love some of these pictures so much. (laughs) It looks so stupid. I love it. (laughs) But you need to make your art for you. Only for you. Don't make, unless you're making a gift for somebody else, make your art for you. Make it your characters, your studies, your music, your dances. I don't care. Model a freaking penis out of clay and then give it a smiley face. I don't care what you do. Do it because you love doing it. And don't get on social media unless you need to, because it will make you an addict. Social media is, I think, I think there was a study done about this. Social media is as addictive as cocaine. It it, it sparks the pleasure centers in your brain. It's like sugar. Social media is psychological sugar and it gives you nothing. Sugar does, sugar at least gives you a little spike of energy. Social media and the likes get you absolutely nothing. So Take this away. If you're young, don't use Instagram. Don't post on TikTok until you enjoy your art. 
And then once you start posting, do not pay attention to the likes. They will feel good in the beginning, but it will hurt afterwards. It's just like a drug. It's like a drug that's not a substance. It's a drug of habit. I know I've been, I know I'm generally very soft and I make kind of lighthearted, goofy videos on TikTok and here on YouTube. I'm more of a teacher and a happy, you know, I'm a happy weirdo older sister. This is your older sister telling you, do not let the likes make you feel bad. You are in control of your happiness and you are in control of your art. Make your art for you. I think I repeated that point like five million times, okay? I just really want to drill it in your head. I don't want you to have to go through what I did, especially at my level. Gosh, going from literally zero to all that and then back down, not fun. It did horrible things to my self-worth. So now that that literal rant of an art talk Thursday is over, I bid you adieu. Remember, drink your water, get your fricking sleep. Please, please believe in yourself and chase your dreams, whatever they may be. I love you guys, and I will see you tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern for the Art Talk Friday stream. Bye-bye!